Good morning and a really warm welcome to you on this Sunday morning. I hope we find you all well. Let us open with prayer. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness and your loving kindness and compassion. You truly are a loving Father. Lord, we pray for your guidance in these difficult times. Take away the hatred of one to another. Replace it with, with love. Because how can we truly love you when we can't love our fellow brothers and sisters in this world? Teach us to shun evil and help us to share the good things that you have given to us with, with our brothers and sisters. Help our whole beings reflect your love. Let us show compassion to the sick and the needy in this world. Let us start with our own communities. Help us to go out and share the gospel, the gos your gospel and love with the people we meet. Maybe also share your love with our families and friends. And for ourselves, Lord, we ask forgiveness for our failures. Also, Lord, with your love, guide our paths in, in the weeks ahead. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Our readings this week are Psalm 16 and Acts 2, 22 to 28. And I'll be reading from the NIV Bible. So let's start with Psalm 16. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I said to the Lord, You are my Lord. Apart from you I have no good thing. As for the saints in this land, they are the glorious ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrow of those will increase who run after other gods. I will not pour out their limitations of blood or take up they, their names are my lips. Lord, you have assigned to me my portion and my cup. You have made my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my tongue rejoices, my body also will rest secure, because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let the Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasure at your right hand. And our second reading is from Acts, Acts 2, 22 to 28. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles wonders and signs which God did among you through him as you yourselves know this man was handed over by God by God's set purpose and foreknowledge and you with the help of wicked men put him to death by nailing him to the cross but God raised him from the dead freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about this, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will live in hope because you 
will not abandon me to the grave. Nor will you allow the Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Praise be to God and thanks for his word. Again there we have a connection between the Old and the New Testament, showing again how much the apostles relied on the scriptures. Thank you. We continue this week with uh, part two of Peter's sermon. You may remember last week we heard how Peter had bravely stood up and spoke to explain the happenings of that day. Let us now look at how he continues. Peter had quoted from the book of Joel, using the scriptures to emphasize God's faithfulness and also the fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel. By quoting from the book of Joel, he points out uh, an, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, miraculous dreams and visions and prophecies, signs and wonders regarding the day of the Lord, and an invitation to call on the name of the Lord. You would think that that was enough for anyone, but no. Peter wanted to share the truth about the saving grace of Jesus, which is available for all, for all of us. No one is exempt if they accept Jesus as their saviour. In the first part of his sermon, Peter had explained the strange things that had happened, which they had all just seen. But now it is time for him to bring the essential message to the people. He had started with these words, Men of Israel, hear these words. Peter had something very important to say, and he wanted the people to pay attention. In the first few years, verses of the reading from Acts, Peter uses the word man when referring to Jesus. For God's plan to work, Jesus had to become human, a man who would experience all the feelings and the emotions that you and I will experience. Jesus had to die as a man so he could truly experience death with all its pain and agony as he carried our sins to the cross. But on the third day, he rose up from death, defeating sin and death forever. God's will had been done. Most of the people there on that day would either have heard of the work of Jesus or even experienced his miracles. After all, there were over 5,000 people who experienced the sharing of the two fish and the five loaves of bread. Peter was obviously aware of this, but he also knew that most of them were guilty of calling for Jesus to be crucified. Peter wasn't going to pull any punches. He gave it to them straight. Peter's words were, Peter's words are, you, with the help of wicked men, put to him, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. Peter is truly filled with the Holy Spirit and he has a, the courage not just to try to please the crowd, but he tells them the truth. This is a good example for us today. We must preach the gospel as it is written and not try to soften it to please people. Peter quotes from the scriptures again, this time from the Psalms 
using the words of David. What a great choice. King David, a man the Jews revered and respected. Surely his words can help. In verse 10 and 11 of Psalm 16, we read these words. Because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let the Holy Spirit see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasure at your right hand. Peter draws their attention that to David had prophesied, prophesied the resurrection of the Lord. Jesus, um, let me start that again. <laughs> Peter draws their attention that, that to David had prophesied the resurrection of our Lord Jesus hundreds of years earlier. As I have already said, Jesus died as a man, but the embalming process saved his body from decay before his resurrection, just as David had prophesied. The pains of death have now been turned into pains of birth. A new life is available to us, to us all, by the resurrection of Jesus. At times during the, the crucifixion, Jesus may have felt alone and abandoned, but he is no longer alone or abandoned because he now lives and reigns in glory in heaven with his Father. We too need not feel alone or abandoned. If we allow Jesus into our lives, he will walk with us every day of our lives. God never abandoned Jesus and he will not abandon you. Why not invite Jesus into your life now? If you want to know Jesus as your saviour, let's say this prayer together. Lord Jesus, please accept me as I am with all my weaknesses and failures. Please come into my life and lead me in your ways, Lord. Amen. Well, well done if you said that prayer. Share your good news with a fellow Christian and spend some time talking about your new faith. Let's close with the grace. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for listening and I hope that you keep safe in the coming week and hopefully see you next week. God bless.